Why do I worry so much and why am I scared of everything? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Why am I so worried about everything? Why can I not seem to get my mind off of my troubles? Why am I focused on what's going on in the world politically and it scares me to death? What is going on with us that we continue to just focus on all of these worries? And are we meant to focus on all these things? Or have we gotten off balance and we're focused too far onto the worry side and not enough on the joys of our life? This is what we're going to talk about today because worry is a real thing. One of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this particular topic is because I was just part of a, a healing summit with a lot of different uh, people from different backgrounds and healers of all sorts. And one of the questions that was asked of me and that was continuously asked to all of the people that were participating was, you know, what do you do when someone comes to you and they're feeling so much stress and anxiety about the world and politics and the things that are happening? What do you tell them to help them get over it? And of course, this is not an easy thing to answer because there are no easy answers. I think that in being real, we have to understand that there is no real easy answer to any questions that we're going to ask about life that causes us to deal with our, our inner world, our inner stories, our inner dialogue that we tell to ourselves. It's not easy to get through life. And when we're trying to become better human beings, we're going to worry about a lot of things, but we're constantly going to be in this stage of looking within ourselves and we're going to be questioning a lot of things. This is why another question that comes up a lot is, you know, how can, how can people remove doubt? How can people remove fear? And I don't like to give these, you know, standard type of answers that come off as though, you know, I know it all or that I've accomplished it all. I think the key is understanding what you're going to go through and baking that into the cake that we're all going to have fears, we're all going to have doubts, we're all going to lack confidence at certain times, and we're all going to worry about things and have anxieties. And that is the actual common denominator that makes us the same, right? It's not that there's something wrong with us for feeling that way. It's that we are responding to the stimulus of the world, and that is quite normal. The thing that we have to focus on is how can we balance all of that in our own personal lives because we are always at risk of it going to the other side where we are just completely focused on all the things that make us scared in life and then we start making a lot of decisions based on our fears versus making decisions based on how to have peace. So one of the interesting things that, that I heard from somebody that I listened to was that, you know, part of enlightenment is when we let go of worry. And I was talking to my husband about that and he said, well, that sounds, that sounds really, uh, that sounds great. <laughs> and that sounds like somebody who lives in a monastery giving an answer because they're not, they're not living in the same world that we do. I had a teacher from a long time ago who also said the same thing that, you know, when you, there's a time and a place to go silent, you know, to go inward and to just be, you know, clearing out all the mental debris and, and being able to hear your own voice, breathing and being in silence. There's a time for that because we, we need to get to that space when we've gone too far the other in the other realm. But there's also a level of staying there too long and then you can no longer relate to really what's going on in the world. And this is why I say, you know, um, as people that are going to be influencing other people or um, working with other people in helping them to achieve the things they want to achieve, you can't bury your head in the sand and just say, okay, I'm going to be positive all the time. I'm not going to listen to anything, I'm any news, nothing negative. I mean, you couldn't do that if you tried because you're going to get things through osmosis of just being out in the world. But if you're not out in the world at all, you can do that quite well, but then you're not understanding the real stresses and the pains and the suffering that people that are living in the world are going through. 
So there has to be some balance and something with me lately, you know, with all this AI stuff that's changing, it's really changing the digital world. And it's from hearing other people talk to, it's creating a lot of fears in people with their own businesses. A lot of people are hundred percent digital and online and AI has really changed a lot of that for people. And it's made people really nervous. And what happens is people, when they get they have worries and anxieties about the world and about their personal world. They start making, they start looking at money is the biggest thing. They start looking at, okay, how can I make more money? And they start doing things that were never part of their mission. And this is where, you know, that, that thought process of, you know, if you could just stop worrying about everything and just keep doing the mission and the thing that you love, keep focusing and keeping that, that, that vision of what you started it for, whatever it is that you're doing in life, what are you really good at and stay focused on that? Because we can start, you know, doing these little offshoots of everything else to make us feel better that, you know, the world, you know, that we have all these other ways that we're going to bring in stability. But the reality is, you know, what we're doing is just adding on more things. So, for me, I had to step back and say, you know, I can see where my brain is starting to go outside of myself and thinking of all these other things that I could do that have something to do with my business. And I'm going to bring that in. But then I, I, what I did is I said, no, you know, I'm going to apply this, you know, how can I actually focus on worrying less? Because usually when, when worry comes, it's, we come by these things, honestly, right? But most of the things that we worry about never happen, okay? And that means that we spent so much of our, our time equity focused on things that never happen. So if we could turn that around and we could say, you know, I'm going to do the hard thing, which is I'm going to focus on, focus on not worrying as part of my mission. And it's not me staying more busy and all this stuff because, you know, you there is a level of, of worry that you have to have because you live in the real world and you have to worry about food and, you know, the sustenance and shelter. And if you have children, you've got to worry about taking care of them. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to worry about nothing at all. And then you go clear extreme to the other side of that, right? So there, it's all about a balance. You've got to be somewhere in the middle with all of this stuff. But it's difficult because when we start getting into worry, we start panicking. Now, I'm not one to really talk about the politics of the world. I have my own views and opinions like most people do, right? We, we live in the world and we're, we focus on, you know, there's things that we're for and things we're, we're against and all that stuff. But one of the things that I'm seeing is that people are so panicked in regards to the world because that was another question. You know, people are looking at the political climate and they're and they're scared to death one way or the other. Right. Like no matter who you're voting for, there's people that are scared to death on either side that the other party is going to get in and what's going to happen. And the question kept coming up of like, well, how do you get over that? Well, one of the ways that I do it is by realizing that this is not all happening in a vacuum. This is not the first time that our world has ever experienced all this. And I think about this, you know, I, I was a late bloomer into politics. I, you know, I, I was doing my spiritual journey and then I got religious and, you know, for a little while I was Jehovah's Witnesses and, and they don't do anything, you know, political. They don't vote nothing. I wasn't around a family that grew up and they were political or voted or anything like that. I mean, that was not part of my my life growing up. So I didn't know anything about that. And I went right from being a young person to have, getting married and having babies. And that didn't work out. And things, you know, were very uh, hectic and, and stressful and chaotic for me. So thinking about voting and all that stuff, that didn't happen to me until later when Obama came into office. That's when I got interested. Okay or when he was running for office, that's when I got interested. But since then, I've been paying attention to a lot of things. And one of the things that we're really living in right now is a world of extremes. And, you know, this also includes extreme stress. And this is why we have to really focus on realizing that if, you know, if, if it helps, 
you know, you can go back through history and see that all the things that are happening in our political climate right now, it's not the first time. You know, there, Trump has been, um, he had an attempted assassination on his life, which is should not be part of the dynamic of anything, right? Like if we just want to have political views and we want to vote, it's a, it's a competition. And that's why I say, this is a competition as it should be, right? It's, this is our democratic process in the United States. It should be a competition. People should have opinions on both sides. People should have debate. Sometimes people even get into, you know, heated debates. That's okay. Right. That that all of that is as it's intended. What's not intended and what is not good for us is when we go into extremes and we can apply that to every part of our life. Anytime any part of our life goes into an extreme, we're off balance. We're, we're off kilter because we were not made to endure extremes all the time. Right. When we have something that happens to us in our life and it's really, um, we have this extreme stress and it's extremely painful or we just have this very extreme situation that happens to us, it changes our whole world. It impacts everything. And for a while, we can't see anything but that. And politically, I feel like that's where we're at right now. A lot of people are just focused on, on that. But there's other things going on in the world that we need to be focused on. And it's okay for us to have political views and have interest in political things. But when we get to the point where it is taken over our life, where it's damaged our relationships, when we can no longer have conversations with people, this is a problem. Because we have gone to an extreme where we can't even talk anymore. And it's okay that we, we don't agree on things with people. In every area of life, I mean, we, I, we're talking about right now politics, right? Because people are feeling this extreme panic that, oh, what if Trump gets in office and our whole democratic, you know, uh, you know, way of living is going to be destroyed? It's very doubtful, but it's an honest fear, right? And on the other side of that, I'm sure that people are feeling the opposite or, or the same for the other party, I should say. They're going to destroy our democracy. They're going to, because I've heard it on both sides. You know, my son and I were on different sides of the aisle. But one of the things, things that's beautiful about us is that we can still share reason. We can still respect one another's point of view and not try to convince the other person to change their view. We can have conversation. And if he sends me something to listen to, I will listen to that. And if I have something to say, excuse me, Minnie, if I have something to say, here comes her tail. She's known for this. <laughs> She's my little mascot. Her name's Minuet. The thing that's beautiful about the way we communicate is that we, we aren't trying to convince each other to change their point of view. We aren't demonizing one another because we have a different point of view. We are listening to certain things, and I might hear something that, you know, um, he didn't hear. And that's happened before where something was said that maybe was misogynistic. And I said, oh, you know, I agree with the rationale of some of the things that they're saying, you know, the extremes, because it does go both ways. And fears go both ways, uh, things that we could all be afraid of in regards to the parties and what they believe and what they're doing and stuff like that. There's enough of that to go around. But the thing that we can't forget is that, one, we have to be decent to one another. We have to stop trying to convince people to believe what we believe. Why, why is that necessary? It's not. In our democracy, we're set up as a two-party system so people can believe two different things and they get to vote at the end of the day. So what I do to overcome that fear that I, you know, I initially had some fears myself and then I said, no, I don't need to because this is not new. It's a competition. The ultimately, focusing on 
less extremes, focusing on what's important to us, focusing on our mission. That is the most important thing that we can do when our brain starts to go out and we start to have fears. We can just say to ourselves, everything that has that is making me scared right now has already happened in the world before. We've already survived so much in our in our world and in our society, and we will continue to thrive. There were years that I was not part of the political climate, and I'm sure there was tons of things going on even back then, and 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 everything was fine. I'm here today. So None of this is brand new to what's going on in the world. It's just that we're taking it in right now and we're in more of a digital world where it's in our face constantly. Reduce the amount of digital intake that you're taking. Turn the news off. Put yourself on a social diet, a news diet. How much time do you really need to be involved in that? And then shut it off. Go outside and take a walk talk to people, live people, go out and say hello to people in your community, go take a walk in a forest or a beach, you know, be around family and friends, have real conversations with people, leave chat rooms or or groups that are fighting and arguing about things and take in a little bit at a time, but know what your limits are and avoid extremes and avoid filling the gap with things, with all these other things when you're worried and scared about things and really just go more focused on what you've already been working on. Stay focused on that and stay focused on love and peace. Take a deep breath. Let it go. You know, realize that you don't need to be in extremes and anything that you're you're stressed out about right now, there's a certain level of stress that you're going to have because you're alive and living in the world. You're not in a monastery, but the extremes, that's the uncomfortable part that we don't need to be part of. And we can choose to not participate in extremes by putting limits on things for ourselves so that we don't keep feeding the beast internally. So what did you get out of this? Leave it in the comments.